But one thing about um, Atrekeos, uh -huh. uh, one, uh, one thing I learned from uh, Mark Shevsky, uh -huh. who is, of course, a specialist in, in the Hippocratic corpus, right. which has a lot of um, Ionian um, idiom built into it, uh, that um, Atrekeos is is attested there too. Oh, it's cool. also attested in Herodotus, uh -huh. and Herodotus uses it for um, a straight talk, where where um, it's clear what um, what the truth value is. I mention okay. it because people think that uh, the trek of Atrekeos is cognate with. Um, what in Latin would be torqueo, to twist. So mm -hmm. it's in an untwisted, straightforward I way. I think that's the, uh, yeah. whatever it is, the ah yeah. is yeah. Uh, emphatic. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, tell me in a way that is not, uh, well, let's say twisted, not false. Uh, and that false, goes with not, the catalexo, not too, false, right? And it goes with catalexo, because yep. when you're yep. doing that, you're you going from A to right Z, and, the, and you yep. better get it right. Yep. That, B comes after A, and C comes after B, all yeah, the way to exactly, Z. Exactly. Uh, even if you skip some things, the sequence has to be right. Yeah. But I also wanted to mention that in Thucydides, mm -hmm. uh, unlike Herodotus, uh, Atrekeos is no longer used, it's Akribos. Uh -huh. And uh, even to this day, in modern Greek, if, if you want to say exactly it's Akribos, uh -huh. but Atrekeos it has been displaced. gets extinct. Uh -huh. okay. uh, what, what fascinates me, and this goes back to what Mark um, um, told me about, I, I never noticed it before, is in the Hippocratic corpus. You have both atrekeos and, and akribos. Okay. Um, and obviously they mean slightly different things, but for Herodotus, it's only atrekeos. For Thucydides, and shall we say the rest of Greek, uh -huh. it, it, more or less, it's akribos, right? Truth so, values. Okay, so it's a, Ionian uh, yes. scientia that yes, takes over. Yes, yes, Ionian, Ionian and uh, akribos, and akribos. Scientific language. Yep. J just a little point in uh, the last line, since I'm not sure of my own translation now. The epe. I think I, I forget how I translated, it, but I think I translated it when. When, yes, which and is fine. It, I think. But I think it could also be since, it, right? It, well, and yeah. it changes it slightly. Uh, yeah. it, you always have that question with yes. epe, which is it? Yeah. And uh, here, yes, uh, you could uh, talk about it either way. Yeah. It's well. since he was. That's the reason that uh, m many people came. Since he, as Greg was saying, yeah. he, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, went to many places. He's been everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Um, or it just could be um, back then we had a lot of guests yeah. Yeah. W when he was uh, active. Well, a couple yeah. of other things is um, there's been so much ink spilled, printer's ink I mean, uh -huh. on, on Epe in Pindar's Olympian One, where when we do the flashback, okay. We, we do the flashback to the myths that uh, somehow motivate the ritual activity of athletics in general and the chariot race in particular. Uh, some people will say, oh, the epe means since, because it's an etiology, because. Uh -huh. uh, other people will say, no, it's, it, it's when, because it's chronological, it goes back. Well, it's, of course, both. Mm. And, yes. and, uh, Epe has this wonderful power of, um, of conjuring myth. Since it conjures myth, it's uh -huh. almost like a signature here. Well, there's a big mythological complex of Odysseus visiting a thousand and one places. Mm -hmm. Lenny Sky, I'm, I'm wondering, Doug, what you think. Uh, Lenny Sky might mean also that the other character who gets around as a mysterious guest is Athena herself. And, and, and this language, this poetic diction, is so rich in, in the elusive art where um, any performance of anything will conjure uh, so many other performances, <laughs> so many other versions, that the Kai, I think, can, 
Well, that would make it very immediate in the yeah. context uh, <laughs> that uh, he, like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've been around, too. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's unintended by Telemachus, but it's intended by the master narrator. Right. So right. Or it could even be, uh, you know, Telemachus acknowledging uh, the presence of a, a stranger who yeah, is uh, Epistrophos. And, yeah. uh, and, and he's, he's getting, he's starting to wise up. <clears throat> uh, yeah. He's starting the beginning to of his wising it's up. It's the beginning. Yes. All right. But uh, anyway, I think the big point here was uh, what you pointed out, Lenny, the uh, Kanos, uh, yeah. with no uh, previous reference. Yeah. That's quite pretty yeah. striking. Yeah. In another context, I argued, and, and I'm sure I'm not the first one who argued, that Kanos in context of epiphany mm -hmm. is very appropriate because um, pointing at something. It's, it's, um, it's an entity that's a, a million light years away, mm -hmm. like a god, mm -hmm. because gods do gods and goddesses uh, perform epiphanies. But um, this divinity can become immediate in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, the um, the pronoun can't keep up, so it's still kainos, an Even ostentatiously distancing uh, pronoun. I don't like that word, but distal pronoun. Yeah, I, I never understood that word, D-I-S-T-A-L. But people use that for mm -hmm. this kind of deictic uh, function. Right. Uh, and and so, in a sense, it's almost epiphanic language here too. Right. right. If if you think of Athena, where Athena suddenly makes an appearance from a million light years away, because gods are so superior. Mm -hmm. Uh, and therefore so distant, but they can be immediate when they want to. Right. So the, the, I, I don't have this, uh, I have, when I think of, of Kainos, I think of this uh, very weird thing that I did with when I, a long time ago when I worked with uh, Jacques Aupin, the anthropologist, and he showed us, this, we showed us these movies of the Yanomami Indians in the, in the Amazon, and they would, that would be a shaman who would tell a myth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when he tell the, the myth, I mean, that was an incredible performance. But but he would he would he, he most of the time we'd say it was over right over there. He, mm, he'd yes. point that, yes, and, and that was over there. Yeah, and he's yeah. literally, you know, he's calling it up to you by by the gesture. There was nothing right. there, <laughs> but it was in his head. But in, in your a sense, head. it was. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. A, you had to believe yeah, it. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. A communal vision. Yeah, no, <clears> so it was very <throat> vivid. Uh, the gesture. Even if it's the, even if the you know it has to do with the whole mindset that you're in, so, so this small, yeah, right? this small scale society, society was not the Yukuna. No, this is the Yanomami Indians. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Because there weren't any. And those in those days, now there are videos apparently of them. I saw wow. one of them once, but but in those days there weren't yet. Wow.